impact of it. Now, I want to begin with you, uh, Mr. Gentu, looking at this meeting that the uh, Minat boss called. Some people have the impression that it is like to prepare for elections, so they have to go and start uh, maybe preparing their villagers to vote for the for the CPGM government. Uh, I, I, I <coughs> I'm not in the better position to say whether the reason why the behind government government reason behind telling the chiefs to take go back to their different villages or their different jurisdictions. But notwithstanding, we know that the meeting that we had in Yaoundé just three, four days ago, whereby some 59, 59 traditional rulers of Norway and Southwest held talks with the government territorial minister at Tanganji, during which they discussed on how government measures to make to see how the they can go back. I think it's, they are putting in measures to see how they can go back, given the fact that the crisis has not yet come to an end in this region. And um, unfortunately, you say internally displaced chiefs, and we should note it, it should be, it should be, we should take note that not all of the chiefs, or not all of the chiefs in North and South West are IDPs. There are some of them that go up and down, they have remained in their different palaces. I quite remember the form of Bafut, form of Com, and other, even the form of chiefs in South West here, they are still in their palaces, so yeah. not all we should be clear. Yeah. So for the 59 traditional rulers that had a meeting with the boss, the territorial administration, and territorial administration chief, uh, boss at Tangaji during the, the meeting, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good initiative, but it must be also called to consent for for Cameroonians, as well as those of North and South West, to start asking, we are asking ourselves now, how would they go back to this very, what make them to run, to leave these villages? Uh, uh, what pushed them out of the villages? Uh, we, are still, we start looking at did what pushed them out of the village is still there or is over? Because we know very well that what pushed them out of the villages was this anglophone crisis of which it is instead sometimes nowadays going from 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 worse from from bad to to worse. So I I I, I think that is where the problem the bone of contention is for. What are, what are they going? Are they going back that there's peace in Norway and Southwest? Oh, and take note some of them. Some of the chiefs are even afraid. They know they have lament. Some of the chiefs lament that their palaces have been desecrated or destroyed by, other, by the armed groups involved in this crisis. So uh, it was as an excellent initiative from the government, but uh, it's it, the wrong time given the fact that the crisis is still ongoing in, in the two regions. Yeah, uh, let me come to Pobetran. If these chiefs are told to go back to their palaces and they have the fear of maybe the guys of the on the world, especially the Amber guys, and so they need security and secondly, they feel that their palaces have been disintegrated. You know, they call now for protection and so on. We see these administrators when they are going out, they go with military guarding them and they go in armor cars and so on. How do you think these chiefs will have to go back to these unsecured areas? Well, I want to look at that question from three angles. Yeah. One, you said they're IDPs. Okay. Two, you, know, let me, you said they're IDP chiefs. Yeah, because most of the other in Yaoundé, Douala. Yes, let me, let, me, let me come. They're the IDPs chief. We have refugees in Nigeria. Yeah. We have civilian refugees all over Cameroon. Yeah. Now, to, tell, uh, to say that they should go back to their various villages when the Anglophone crisis is worsening, yeah. it's like taking the, gold, the, 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 the rope off the neck of the goat and sending it to the, to the buyer. It makes no sense. You are still endangering their lives. Let us go back to the roots. Let us stop chasing shadows yeah. and leaving the content. Because as it stands, the agricultural crisis is the situation at hand. And the same gov government body is doing everything possible so that each and every Cameroonian can enjoy the peace we enjoyed before. This chief left their palaces not because they were desperate needs to, 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 to move to Yaoundé. The chief feel very comfortable in his or uh, in his palace because I think we have just his in this case. But they were forced out of the palace, and we all know that the 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 the, the tax that has been labeled on them 
For now, they are black legs. In what I doubt it or not. They, for because the the concept and the ideology behind the separatists is that if you move anywhere closer be, be, uh, to the government, you are black leg. You get anything, you you, you your family member maybe uh, engaged in a concur, you are black leg. So now you have not make a conducive environment for this chief, and you are forcefully sending them back home. Are you sending them home as sacrificial lambs or what? Let us tackle the situation at hand. The chiefs want to go back home. The people want to come to be controlled by their chiefs. But as it stands, the atmosphere is not conducive for the chiefs to go back. Mr. Moderator, after cross views from other panels, I would still like to get some minutes to conclude this topic. Let me not monopolize the topic. Okay, let me come to Mr. Ate Solomon. This chief, you know, not too long from now, we shall be having the House of Chiefs. We shall be having the elections for maybe the uh, uh, other elections for the southwest, that uh, all, all regions that maybe representatives have to go for the regional house. Now, most of these chiefs have to be elected or they have to elect others. How do you think it has to be possible that this will, will, will operate? Because if the House of Chiefs has to hold, then these people have to be present in their areas. If they have to elect for the regional house, they have to be present in their areas. Now, these are the consequences of mm -hmm. um, the attrition of uh, our cultural heritage. Yeah. Uh, what the government is uh, doing is trying to undo what they did. Yeah. Uh, I totally blame the government for the situation because they've politicized our traditional institutions. Okay. And when you politicize traditional institutions, the traditional values are lost. The traditional rulers lose their legitimacy and consequently, in the eyes of the people, they are just like any other human being. And so when they try to force their political ideology on the people, especially in critical moments like this, uh, you begin to find situations like this that are arising. I'll show you there are traditional rulers today, just like um, uh, my co-panelist, uh, Mr. Clovis, said a while ago. That not all of them are IDPs. Yeah. Because in the midst of the chaos, uh, a lot of them have, some of them have been able to maintain their traditional sacredness. And that has been their force to reckon with. But if you have traditional rulers who think that they can become, be, they can make themselves tools in the hands of those in the corridors of power, it becomes a problem. Yeah. And these are the consequences of what we are facing today. And so uh, the regional elections are coming up, the House of Chiefs coming up. I really want to find out on what basis these elections are going to take place? Are they going to be some kind of political machinization, just like uh, what we do, what we know in this country? Uh, why do we have to involve a lot of politics in traditional management of our affairs? I think in the days of the Southern Cameroons, uh, we used to have natural house of chiefs without all these politics around it. And today, we're bringing back a house of chief that has been politicized yeah. and consequently losing its legitimacy in the eyes of the people. And so, to me, uh, what we need to do, if we really need these people to go back to their, to, 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 to their various palaces, what we need to do is not just to stop the crisis, but we stop the crisis and we give back legitimacy of the traditional rulers by making them purely a political, making them avoid partisan politics. If they avoid partisan politics and they stay neutral, it means that they are able to accommodate everybody in their communities, in their localities. They will be able to accommodate the military. They will be able to accommodate the armed fighters. And from there, dialogue can begin. Dialogue is not just at the top. Dialogue begins at the community level. And these are community mobilizers. These are community mediators. The traditional rulers are first community mediators. And when you are a mediator and you are not neutral, there is a problem. And so nobody will be able to trust you. One party will trust you, the other party will not trust you, and then there will be chaos. And one party will be trusting you because you will defend his position. 
and it becomes a problem. That is where we find ourselves today, in a situation where our traditional rulers, who are community mediators, have lost their neutrality to stand as real mediators. Because if they maintained their traditional authority, they would have been mediating the problems we have today from the community level while expecting that at national level we can have a bigger picture of the national hey, dialogue. Uh, what is there is that if you see some of the traditional rulers, you know, putting food on their table yes. is becoming maybe politicians, yes. is to becoming partisans. Yes. Okay, if they have to say, okay, traditional rulers shouldn't be involved in active politics, what should be done to keep them at the level that they are supposed to be? I don't think that the only job in this world is, is politics. I don't think that the only profession in this world is politics. And every serious community yeah. will make sure that they empower their community leader okay. to stay neutral and be objective in the face of conflicts like this. And I've seen a lot of communities where traditional rulers are not politicians, but they're well empowered. They have economic sustainability and they're yeah. suspending their livelihoods. So I don't think that politics is the only profession we have in this world. By the way, it's not even a profession. Pro politics to me is a way of life that we need to avoid. Even politicians themselves are supposed to be professionals in other milieus. And so when we tend to look at politics as a profession, that we need to get into politics and extort money, that is where the problem begins. And so a lot of people are misunderstanding that politics is not a profession. Politics is an ah, the way of managing people. You manage people from your self-welfare. Okay. So how is it possible that we tend to make politicians or our traditional rulers to rely on politics for survival? That is where the problem begins. And so communities need to empower their community leaders so that they should stay away from politics. As soon as, long as they stay away from politics, there is going to Just be Just a few seconds before I go to Mr. Gentil. Um, is it not like it's high time these traditional rulers to be, should be put on good salary so that they should stay out of politics and live well in order not to become not to put them in some, on, on maybe the, 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 the government no, no. If, if, oh, go, yes. if, if government puts them on salary that's that, that, that's the oh. that's where the monopoly begins okay. you know what what, what paying somebody means Mean somebody says he who pays the piper controls okay you understand so even if the, the case is practical our civil servants yeah. Um, even not all of them, but the top civil servants, where do they pay their loyalty to? And even when it comes to times of election, you find people who use government cars to go and campaign for the ruling party because they are under the payroll of the government. And they tend to mistake between the government and the ruling party. And so when you extend that to traditional rulers, it's not going to be different. It's still going to be the same thing. So the best thing is, is for communities to empower their leader and not the government empowering the leader of the community. Because when you, the government will empower the community leader, the government will have control over you. Okay, let me come to Mr. Gent, adding to what you have to say. If you look at some communities, especially those of the Southwest region, it, you know, it's not a tradition that you know, they empower their, their traditional ruler. And so, don't you think that there will be a problem with that? The whole community that I think, <coughs> yeah. as I will say, I'll begin a bit what my fellow panelists, uh, Mr. Solomon, is talking about. Uh, I think the government of Cameroon, I don't know, they had a plan, they are working on a plan, or they are working on a plan to classify chiefs into first class, second class, and third class, and they will be living on salary. I'm first sure class they are already, yeah, they are already, already, first, they are first already. Class already. Salaries, yes, yeah. there's something that is really unfolding. And I think some of these IDP chiefs, from the first class chiefs, that probably they are living on salary. And that goes back to what he's saying that because there is some of them living on salary or because they are being prepared to be what yeah. could be living on salary, they are now unable to be neutral in politics. I'll come back to your question. Neutral in politics in the sense that yeah. because as a leader, especially as a chief, yeah. the, the best position for a chief when it comes to politics is to be neutral. Yeah. You cannot be as a chief and then you stand in front of those who you are subject and you tell them now I belong to a political party. And Some have gone to the ex of ten their village as that you vote just for this party. That is it. Yeah. And when the worst, uh, there are some chiefs that are very intelligent. They, they belong to a political party, but they don't disclose it to the subject. Okay. That's the worst one. When you disclose it to the subject first, know that not all subjects belong to a particular party. Some yeah. of them who don't belong to a party, they will hate you. 
That's or true. any any development or any initiative you want to bring to the to that particular community, they will see it as being influenced by the political party you belong. Okay. Of which some they don't like it. I, I think that is something that as a chief and, and I think chiefs have learned a lesson. And I'm, I'm among the fifty nine traditional uh rulers or chief of North and Southwest who we I would have believed that almost forty of them are are, are not neutral. They have certainly taken a, a part or make it clear that they belong to this, mm -hmm. making their subject to hate them. Or making their subject to this system because the subject also have their own political party that they believe yeah. in their own ideologies. Uh, hey, coming back to your question, Mr. Moreto, I take back that question again. We talked about traditional rulers and servers. Yes, they, they don't have the culture of empowering their, the, the people in the villages of the southwest don't have that culture of empowering their, their traditional rulers. Like in the northwest, we know yeah, that they take right? food to the palace. They have certain things that they do for the palace. They go and clean the palace, they build houses, and so in the palace. No, but no, no withstanding. Yeah. When you are a leader, you are a leader. Yeah. And once you are a chief, you are a chief. It is clear that in chiefs in the northwest, they have what they call a, a centralized. Okay. A centralized traditional system whereby they had a lot of authorities. Yeah. They had a lot of divine kingship. People had a lot of respect to them. They bow down in front of them. They can mobilize villagers to, to, to take care of the chiefs, um, the funds, palace, and other things. They believe in them, they in, believe their in, them in their powers. They believe in their powers. Unlike contrary to the style, we have a decentralized system where chiefs don't have that too much respect. People see them dreaming bars sometimes with chiefs, <laughs> and it's very normal. But when, once you are a leader, you are a leader. Okay. When, once you are a chief, and when, when I'm not saying that those who are on, uh, those from Southwest who are gone, who are IDPs now are not leaders. I'm saying that what are the main problem with them? Surely they have gone out of. They are not neutral as far as politics is concerned. Okay. Yes, because when the, the nature of this anglophone crisis started in a way that the, the first people that were targeting were chiefs. We have seen situations in Southwest where chiefs were, have been taken by some, some non-government and stay with them for weeks. So chiefs were being targeted. But at times, when you begin to look first from the perspective of the chief, who is this chief? What is the stand of this chief? That was this is actually that there are some chiefs since this crisis started till today they are still in their palaces because of neutrality. And there are some chiefs that believe in their people and their subject. Go up, calm down. The chiefs say no, we are together. We will die together. Whatever we are together. That's how some, some chiefs are. But unfortunately, there are some chiefs that before the crisis they 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 might they they antagonize or vex the population. Politically, their standpoint, I'm still repeating. And when this crisis now started now, and then because of, because when you don't have confidence in your people, you suspect them, especially during this crisis, and when you start suspecting them, and you start afraid of your own life, you start now saying, that, no, I'm, I'm, there's insecurity, let me go away. Right. So I, 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 I think with the, with the chief in Southwest, whether the, the tradition, the, that, there's no, that, that tradition is not, in, in, not in, in such a way that people can mobilize or give support to the chief, those things, but when once you are a chief, that you are able to mobilize your people and make your people know that you remain their chiefs. And when it comes to politics, you don't disclose your political party to them. You remain a, a neutral leader and people will like you. Unless you disclose your political party that antagonize the people against uh, you. Uh, let me go to Mr. Pope Bertram. If you look at it, don't you see that these chiefs are just uh, following the wind, where the wind blows a go because they need a better life. If you look at those who are not clinged to the government, they live a very poor and poor life forever. And so they need serious sustenance. What should they do now? Because what should they do to, in order to make sure, because we are talking of neutrality now. If they become very neutral, and you know the way the system in which we are now is, it means they will live in serious poverty. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Before being a chief yeah. through meritocracy, yeah. you have the values. Okay. And let me try to differentiate, maybe I'll not be in the best place, but in the in the fundums in the northwest, yeah. when you are when when you grow up, you have been catered in the palace. It is in very few cases that you see them now going out of the palace and attending school like every other normal child. Yeah, abroad. Abroad yeah. and that. For example, we, I think in Yubi we saw a chief from the Norwest coming to the to, 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 to a classroom with all his uh, attribute and stuff like that. It was, like, yeah. like, it, was, it, was not, it was not called for, it was not yeah. the, uh, the Southwest man culture. Yeah. But with the Southwest man, you are brought up to know that you are a servant leader. 
Your people must see you, you go to school. They know this is this man's native son. Yeah, you go up, you pick a trade or a profession, okay. and you leave. Now that's the first stage. I want to now come to divide and rule, which is what has been come. What I, it, it, is, it has become so recent these days that some of the duos hand pick from a particular village who they want to make a chief, and the chief will be uh, loyal to them. That is where. That's what I say. Yeah, that's what we say. The way the system is now. So that the now. most yeah. well, the people of your of, of your village already know the story. Yeah. How you got there? Yeah. They know who you are. Who you are? You 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 you, you are accountable to. Yeah. So now that already means that if if something like this of um, this crisis now, they already know you that you are an informant to yeah. this, to that, to that. Okay. Now, what I want to say is, you talk about hunger on the chiefs. We know of chiefs that are, are, have been generals, white right? chief back Civil seven. Yes. Civil seven. <laughs> Some of us were, 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 were they work with the CDC. So, so, so yeah. many, many of these examples. So, we just have to know that as a chief, you are a servant leader. There are other areas that we look at as a demigod, but in the context of which we are talking, you are a servant leader. And you will also be ready to fetch for your family. Now, legis the, 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 the legitimacy of a chief mm -hmm. comes from the true background. When you are forced to a position where you don't merit, you can't perform. You can't perform. For example, when you teach a child that you can always come and take, even when he grows to an adult, he still, he still goes back to the original point to take. That is to say that if you are probably a GO or an SDO, from the mind, your ascension onto a throne because you know that you put clinch onto uh, to, to, to a portion of lands that will be assigned to you guys and you are going to share. It means you always pay that tribute, that allegiance to him. So we are saying that our chiefs, we miss you guys. You should you come, back, come back. Come back and let's and be neutral and be legitimate, be sincere and carry out your functions. If you are a clerk in in in, in, in Douala, in CDC, in, in Sonara, you go there and perform your duty. When you come back to your palace and you realize that it's a problem, you solve it amicably. Don't take chances. I had other panelists saying here that chiefs are not supposed to indulge into politics. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I do not. We say that yeah. they should be indulged in politics, but they're not they open to their subject. Yeah. Because the subject are also have different views. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. chiefs yeah. can. Well, I stand, on the point, I stand on the point that chiefs should not get involved in politics. No, but it, 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 I, I maintain that. I civil rights. I think it's a civil right. I maintain that. For everybody to partake in the. Uh, in, in, in politics, but yes. if you there say it's civil, there, 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 there is a, there, it becomes there is a yeah. difference between you take uh, exercising your civil rights in voting and exercising your civil rights in mm -hmm. active yes, politics. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. What, 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 what I'm talking about is when traditional rulers actively take part in partisan politics openly and they declare that I am for this. I'm not saying that during elections. Um, these chiefs should not go and vote for who they think is going to lead them well. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that as a traditional ruler, that traditional sacredness does not permit you to actively take part in political campaigns or political activities of a different part because you are a community mediator. That is what I'm talking about. As a mediator, you're supposed to be neutral. That is the principle of mediation. And you are yes. kind of spiritual leader. Yeah, you are kind of spiritual leader. You encompass everybody. Mm -hmm. Because when you actively take part in a political ideology, yeah. the tendency is that you do not want to welcome Solomon, who is not from your political party. That is the tendency. And, you, and so consequently, you are no longer the mobilizer. You no longer accommodate everybody. Whereas as a traditional ruler, it means that you accommodate everybody. From different political Mr. institutions. Moderator. Okay, yes. Mr. Moderator. Well, Mr. Solomon is painting a point, but I want to tell you that the kind of democracy practice in our country is democracy is democratic Christianity. Which means if you don't belong to my church, you won't benefit. <laughs> you understand? So some of these some of these chiefs also That's why we say the system, yeah, the, the way system, system and that's why we're saying the system is pushing and they are forcing them. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, now, before I come to Mr. Gentle, let me come to you this question. There are, as he said, really, there are some in their palaces from the time this crisis started. Yeah. They have not left. Now, what secret do you think, what secret is there that they have been in their palace and nothing has happened with them, so that these ones who are internally displaced can copy from them to come back and stay in their palaces? It still goes boils back to what I'm saying. Yes. It still boils back to what my, my ideology here. Yeah. You're supposed to remain absolutely neutral. When you remain absolutely neutral in the face of political wahala, yeah. you still control your territory. You still remain that mediator. You still remain that person who accommodates everybody. It means that you can talk to everybody, you can listen to everybody. And so when, you, you, when people feel like they are being listened to, there is no reason for them to be hostile. The reason why they are being hostile, they are hostile towards some community leaders, is because these community leaders no longer listen to them. They've decided to take side and they don't listen to other people. And so in the face of conflict, when you don't listen to somebody, that person becomes hostile towards you, especially when that person knows that you have authority to listen yes. and to take uh, into consideration his or our worries. And when you don't do that, the person becomes hostile. So what they need to learn from these people is that these people have maintained their traditional sacredness, which is neutrality. And as a neutral person, you become that mediator in the community and you listen to everybody. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Gentle, these uh, rulers, these traditional rulers have been sent to their community. And, you know, as we are looking at what they need, they need security and so many other things. They need sustenance. And, you know, the, 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 the system has made it in a way that the traditional rulers pay allegiance to them. We know of the incident where an SDO told the traditional ruler that if you refuse a gift from the president, you'll be dethroned. Mm -hmm. yes. You see, don't you think that these are some of the things that make these people to be very vulnerable? Uh, I, I, I think when you talk about the issue of security, yeah. I, I've seen very, I've not seen any chief in, in Norway and South in Cameroon in general that need a, a security will, that they give a security like a policeman, a gendarme, whatever to take care of. I've not seen it there. And it's going yeah, back to Given the situation now that they the have made themselves, now, given the know, situation to be one-sided. I keep saying that the chief's, yeah, 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 the, they are chief, the chief's security is the chief's legitimacy. Yeah. Chief security is the chief's ability, leadership mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. Because your people secure you more than whatever you think. Mm -hmm. I think the chief, chief security is the people. But in the situation where you are not running away, from your constituency or from your fundum or from your chief down because of fear of the unknown. And I have not seen, I'm not seeing any case in Cameroon where they are giving a security or a place one or them to take care of a chief. Eh? I think the only way is that this chief should be educated on how to come back on leadership because that you are a former chief does not mean that you are a born leader. Some of them follow royalty. Some yeah. from royal from the, from the, the royal royal family, yeah, family. So I think some of them can be educated on leadership skills. Or how they can now come back to, to some school. have not gone to school, they are mm. illiterate mm. and so on. Yes, I think they can now tell them that when you go back, call the people, tell them that where are wrong people because they are number one security for achieve the people. We must take note of this. Yeah, people within your own community first before any other thing. Even because I'm saying this because even they give them 10, 50 janam or whatever, I'm just saying in case, yeah, that will not help. The 10, 50 janam cannot overcome the people, the whole entire community. So I, I, I think the the the, the chiefs will they only educate them that they should need to come back, call all the people in the community, ask them, I'm your chief, you people made me to be your chief. Where have I wrong you people? But the present situation that? now is not even the people who are the bad. The people in the in the ground zero, you know, the amber guys who have uh, threatened them. You know, they don't want to be on their side, so they are afraid of it. You know, some of the chiefs have been killed, yeah. they were slaughtered yes, because so they the were not on their slaughter, side. Slaughter. Uh, yes. that, uh, and you see, go back to say that because that's why we see go back to the, the road course. We see yeah. say that the best solution because government is the one who is putting in measures to make sure that they should come back. And we should go back to say that the best the best thing for these chiefs to be well confined or to be well kept or to go back to their community or their fundum without no problem is for this crisis to come to an end. Okay. Going to stop talking, let them come back with peacefully and, and restore back their, their fundum or their chiefdom. Okay, well, I'll start concluding on this topic. Uh, I want to come to Pope Bertrand. You know, their, their policies have been uh, this kind of great, you know, I don't know if the spiritual powers are still there, given that palaces have been burnt, 
you know, uh, some of these palaces have been taken hostage, excreted everywhere, and some of the thieves were killed. <coughs> Don't you think that it needs some kind of, uh, you know, they need to please the gods before maybe they go back. So what do you think can be done? When you talk of the accommodation, it rings a bell. And, and I believe in the meeting where all our stakeholders were, mm. all this must have been discussed. Yeah. And we also know that the reconstruction of the Northwest, um, Northwest and Southwest initiative is ongoing. I think they were also present and they have looked into some of these loopholes. <coughs> but what I want to say is where are we and where do we go from here? The Minak boss and the power that be to check that if they are going back, even if if they are going back and when this crisis pipes down, yeah. let us go back to each and every community and village and trace the root of meritocracy of chiefs and funds. Yeah. So that by the time we reinstate our house of chiefs, we will not have thieves, we will have chiefs. That's my conclusion on this topic. Uh, uh, I want to have your idea also. These palaces that we believe that maybe the spirits behind these palaces must have left. Yes. What should be done? Because is it like some libation needs to be done, some sacrifice, some traditional activity needs to be done before this? Uh, our spiritual leaders come back. Just like uh, um, uh, uh, <coughs> Clovis Riley, Riley said, yeah. there is no magic. Mm. The magic is for us to have a political solution to the crisis mm. that we're facing. We need to silence the guns at all costs. Because uh, the guns are still being heard every day. And with the guns still being heard, you don't even know who's holding the gun. Don't you it. see that if the father let's say uh, the Minat boss at Tanganji is sending them to go back like a father and maybe the president also president Paul Bia who is known as the chief of chiefs or the funds of funds yeah maybe they go with these chiefs call the people help to call the people as the amber guys and so on and talk with them maybe putting the military aside so that they talk with these amber guys and allow things to that's what we call dialogue, right? Okay. That's what, we, yeah, that's what we call dialogue. And we say the only way for these people to go back peacefully and continue their work in their communities is for the guns to be silenced. You cannot continue asking the chiefs to go back when they know that what chased them out of their communities is still there. It doesn't really make sense. And so for us to have these people go back and sit in their communities secure is for them. Yeah to make sure that the guns have been silenced. Without the silencing of the guns and reinstatement of traditional authority, this is very important, reinstatement of traditional authorities, it's going to be difficult for these people to go back if these things are not done. Mr. Gentry, your last word on this, the, the palaces have been defied. How do these people go and start ruling? Maybe the spirits might chase them. No, we, we always say if there's peace, if there's an end to this crisis, there are people that can, there are people that are in charge of that. Maybe they themselves also IDP somewhere. There are people in charge of palace that they can properly take your palace and bring back palace to normalcy. Traditionally, spiritually, the problem in is they're gone. The fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown. Dear viewers, we shall next be talking on some other issues on this program whereby uh, at this time we will be talking on the uh, all uh, anglophone general conference the leader